Hello and welcome to a brand new series of videos specifically for developers interested in getting hands-on with MuleSoft's new IDE, AnyPoint Code Builder. My name's Dave Norris, and in this video, we're going to design and publish an API specification together. In this video, I'll be using the desktop version of AnyPoint Code Builder, but know that the cloud IDE works in a very similar way, so feel free to use either. Okay, let's get started. When you first open AnyPoint Code Builder, you'll see your homepage. The very first thing we're going to do is log into the AnyPoint platform, as this allows us to interact with the control plane to publish our API and share it with our organization. You'll notice the status bar at the bottom of the screen currently indicates we're logged out. Let's open the command palette and select the option to log into the AnyPoint platform. As always, using Command Shift P on a Mac or Control Shift P on Windows allows us to select an available option. We'll select the option to log in to the AnyPoint platform. We're then going to follow all of the prompts to log in, including specifying our username and password. Once we're logged in, you'll notice that the status at the bottom of the screen now indicates we've logged into the AnyPoint platform as it shows our username. Next, we'll open the command palette and select the option to design an API. When selected, this is gonna open a prompt for us to specify the name and location of our API. We'll call ours Hello World and choose the specification type to use. AnyPoint Code Builder supports REST API markup language or RAML and OpenAPI specification or OAS. And you can choose JSON or YAML formats. I'm going to create an open API specification in JSON format. Once we create the project, AnyPoint Code Builder is now going to create the project structure needed for us to start building the API specification. It's also going to provide a simple starting point for us to get up and running quickly. Now let's build out the specification using AnyPoint Code Builder's inbuilt IntelliSense and validation to help us along the way. Let's start with the info section and add a description. Next, let's use the built-in IntelliSense that comes with AnyPoint Code Builder to get a context-aware menu of options available. By clicking Control Space, I can quickly determine that I can insert a component for my response. I can select Components, Schema, We'll call our response object message and we'll insert the fact it's going to be of type object. It's going to return the properties message of type string. Next, let's add a path corresponding to the endpoint that we want our clients to call and specify a URI parameter that people can change that corresponds to their name. So under paths, let's add the path hello with the URI parameter name in curly braces. Again, using IntelliSense, I can see a list of operations that I can perform. In this case, we'll do a get operation. We'll then specify some required parameters. Here, we're gonna specify two required parameters in the header corresponding to client ID and client secret. This is going to allow us to secure our API. Then we'll add a required parameter in the path called name, where people will specify the name they want to say hello to. You'll notice at this point that AnyPoint Code Builder is highlighting an issue with our specification. To find out what the issue is, let's open the problem panel by using Command Shift M on a Mac or Control Shift M on Windows. Here you can see that the issue is that responses cannot be empty. Hovering over the text also reveals the same issue. And the minimap at the right hand side of the editor also highlights the issue in red. Let's fix the issue by adding a response. So again, pressing control space allows me to specify responses. We'll specify a response for 200 OK. 
Then we'll add our response is going to be of JSON format. It's going to use the schema we set up at the top. And we'll include an example that people can see, in this case, saying hello to Andy. So with AnyPoint Code Builder, you've just seen we've designed a brand new API specification right in the tool itself. And we used Open API specification. It's going to take a name as a parameter and then say hello to that person as the response. But let's use the inbuilt mocking service to verify we've set up the API correctly. The mocking service is available by clicking the API console button in the editor window. Since the API is built based on an industry standard, the mocking service can show me some basic documentation that I can verify. Here I can see the endpoint I specified and the get operation. If we drill down on the get operation, we can see the URI parameter and check it's required, as well as the client ID and client secret. We can also see the response types and the example we specified. Finally, we can even try out the endpoint using the try it button. Let's see what happens if we don't specify a name URI parameter. Here you can see we get a 400 bad request since name is required. If we specify all the required fields, you can see the 200 OK response with our sample message. So the mocking service is great because it helps me validate that the API design is as I intended. But what I really want to do as a developer is share this with others in my company to get feedback. So let's take a look at how we can share this specification with others in my organization. To share the API with other developers, it's recommended to use a version control repository. If you're new to using Visual Studio Code and version control repositories like GitHub, I've included a link in the description to a video on how to synchronize your source code as you make changes to the specification over time. We can also share this asset with other people at our organization so that they can search for, find, and give feedback on our new API specification. To do that, we can publish this specification to AnyPoint Exchange. We can simply go to the command palette and select Publish API Specification to Exchange. We'll enter the business group, the name, the artifact ID, set a version number, and send it to be published. The status bar will now show the progress. And after a few seconds, your API specification will be available in AnyPoint Exchange. Once completed, you'll see an option to start implementing the logic for the API immediately. In this case, we're gonna select no. As you just saw, AnyPoint Code Builder can be used to design APIs using industry standard specifications. We use the same IDE to design the API and then publish it to a repository accessible by others in our company. I've got a few resources here you might find useful. At the top is a link to the online documentation with very similar steps that we went through in today's video. And next, for those not familiar with creating industry standard specifications, I've got a link to a feature in the AnyPoint platform that lets you design APIs visually. As always, don't forget to connect with us on LinkedIn by following the MuleSoft community and also checking out our regular Twitch streams. That's it from me. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out the other videos in the series for more AnyPoint Code Builder content.